Did you know that Killer Croc is actually the reason why Jason Todd's parents are gone in the earlier comic run? That's straight up brutal. In this video, The Impossible Happens, you're going to see Killer Croc go from this, stuff like this, to BS like this, to even a Hydra, thanks to temporary power-ups and mythological type stuff, to being amped up via temporary power-ups to be able to fight the entire league like a giant monster. It's hard to believe you start off like this though, more humanoid looking, but he evolves, but you're going to see later on in this video. It's hard to believe it, but Killer Croc actually has gotten women before, even looking like this. In the early era of Killer Croc, he had a face that looked more humanoid, still looked like a monster, but more humanoid. His mouth didn't look as long like a crocodile, but he eventually got an amplification later on, which I'm going to talk about in this vid, where he started looking more reptilian. He became stronger and faster and just more deadly overall, but I'm going to get to that stuff later. When it comes to Killer Croc, no matter which continuity, no matter if we're talking about post-crisis or New 52, Rebirth, this guy known as Waylon Jones seems to have this condition to where he looks like a crocodile, literally. Stated how he used to wrestle alligators in post-crisis, got a skin disease, never knew his dad, and his mom died the day he was born. His aunt brought him up. This is a very dark thing Killer Croc had to go through just from him being born killed his mother in the process. Yeah, other kids hated him. Yeah, Killer Croc had it rough. I bet you didn't know that Waylon Jones' Killer Croc had ancestors, which is, well, at least they explain it like this in his New 52 lore, and why he's like crocodile-ish mutated, you know? Interesting twist on him in this new lore, though. Bet you didn't know his heritage in New 52 allowed him to be able to mutate to the point where he literally turns into a Hydra. I bet you didn't know that, but I'm gonna get into that stuff later on. Haha, <laughs> Killer Croc. Killer Croc pretty much found out that there was a lot of money to be made doing crime in the post-crisis era, so that's how that happened when it comes to his origin of him being kind of like a villain s type being. In newer-ish type stuff, it's kind of the same deal. They talk about it here. His mutation, looking really bizarre and ugly like a lizard. It's the same mumbo-jumbo, tired of people treating him like a monster because of the way he looked. So you know how kids can be when you're really young and getting roasted in class and stuff. Imagine looking like him. So obviously he would grow bitter. So he became a professional carnival wrestler, wrestling alligators just like in the other one. Winner! But he has very low tolerance for verbal abuse, and thanks to all the trauma he has with it, bit his hand off when he was talking junk. He hated seeing the success of the Graysons, aka Robin and stuff, and their performance of the circus act. Actually left the circus, thanks to envy of the Graysons being the main performance of the circus and stuff like that such. When Grayson was young, of course. So yeah, similar stuff to the post-crisis when it comes to his rebirth origin this is how they explain it during flashbacks he was you know of course younger smaller they thought he was a killer the standard struggles hardships that killer croc has to go through people thought just because he looked like a crocodile and looked like a monster that he had killed him when he's actually the one that tried to save him but yeah this didn't look like a good look for him but how strong is he i mean people are cruel in real life but can you imagine looking like this at an early age an authority treats you a certain way because they literally think you're a monster. It's almost like you don't have no choice but to grow up kind of on the darker side of life, you know? I bet you it's hard for you to imagine Killer Croc sparring with Wonder Woman. I guess she's one of the few beings that can put him in his place. <laughs> Even give advice during these sparring sessions. That's funny, ain't it? He's one of those characters that is like all about evolution. He gets stronger as time goes by. For a while, he had a bit of humanity left, but after each kill, it seemed like he became more of a monster and more rampaging and bloodthirsty, just like going straight up insane. Look how his wanted posters look. And you look at his lore, it tells you everything I literally said already about him. When it comes to his powers and abilities, he has razor sharp teeth, good for attacking and intimidating enemies, has incredible strength, stamina, and vicious nature, which makes him one of Batman's fiercest foes, enhanced senses, can smell real good. I already mentioned this, but yeah, he evolves. His body mutates to become more reptilian and cause him great agony. And during the pre-crisis era, this is how they described him. You can read about all that here. Powers. Though possessing no true superpowers, Croc is a savage and abnormally strong because that's just kind of his genetics. I guess that's not his power, I guess. They say easily capable of killing an opponent with his bare hands, blah, blah, blah. And we got more information about him here. And of course, right here. When it comes to Killer Croc's physiology, obviously it's reptilian, has a three-chambered heart, and some differences between the human anatomy. Yeah, right off gate, I'm just going to let you guys know he's going to have a lot of interactions with bat family type characters like Alfred. He has pain tolerance to be stabbed by batarangs. Grenades that make you throw up won't make him throw up. Don't use rifle bullets on him. Nope. On one of his million times fighting Batman, strong his strength against Batman, throws Batman this hard at concrete and cracks all of this BS with his throwing power. And when it comes to home field advantage, he even trolls Batman in his home field advantage to get the stealth on him and stuff of that such. Underwater, that's definitely not a place you want to find him. Being the predator to Batman, like, 
it's just crazy to see all of this. He lifts stuff that's so big, even Batman's like, oh my goodness, showing his super strength. You really think you're going to trap him in some metal bars and he can't get out? Batman is one of those Baki type characters where just because he ain't got no superpowers, he, he still does superhuman stuff all the time. And Killer Croc pretty much proves he can fight, defeat, and overpower beings like Batman. Sleepy. Even Batman stated he's been spooked by Croc before. Normal humans, y'all just get smacked away. Even if you're the freaking Joker, he's not afraid of smacking him away. He's strong off the brick and alligators back. That makes sense with his lore. He wrestled huge alligators. He even talks about how alligators couldn't even harm him. So what hope do y'all have? I've always wondered stuff like this. In comics, could metahuman tears that are ridiculously strong actually work out and get themselves stronger permanently? Did I mention fighting several guards and Batman isn't enough sometimes? As you can see, is he doing a chop? Y'all get curb stomped. Bane isn't the only one that wants to break Batman's back. But of course, he started off as a thug, but he does end up actually just going straight up crazy. Seriously, stop trying to use bullets on him. I'll just let this fight with Batman speak for itself to really show how much of a threat and how crazy he is, causing all this destruction by accident. During this fight with Harley Quinn, he gets stabbed and is still able to keep on fighting. She's very agile and he tosses her here. Car crashes. He survived. It takes a lot to take him out for good, even though he was strapped in. Very long falls, like very long and he can withstand it. Can pull up to a bull and one punch it. Jumps through all this BS and lifts all of this. Throws it and does that. In this occasion, of course, fighting another Bat family member like Robin tearing up his costume. The same costume eight bullets like in my Robin video. Big box like this he can throw because he's that strong. No big deal. He can wreck a couple metahumans. Or blitz through concrete in this case with Harley. Characters like Hunter shoot arrows at him and he can withstand it. Rips out metal door. He's been attacked by Aquaman. Characters like Supergirl compliment his speed even though she's still faster. Killer Croc has actually beat up demons before. He can literally punch heads off. He's fought super soldiers of tears like Huntress and took underwater, which he instantly got the advantage. Same with Katana underwater. You Batman tears don't want to fight him underwater. Of course, he's fought Dick Grayson, disguised as Batman, of course, overpowering him. Bear hug status. He's strong enough to tear through jail cells. Crush Taser blitzes to these guards, taking them out with ease. Yeah, he's too strong for y'all. I mean, he climbed like 50 floors. Throws Batman that hard, he's strong enough to flip cars and flip them upside down because he's that strong. Curb stomping normal humans, punching through concrete, it's just something he's always doing another day in the life. Who do you know that can catch Batman off guard and knock him out with a single punch? That hard. He got in a decently long battle with Bane himself, somebody even without Venom, technically is still ridiculously strong. Yeah, Killer Croc was kind of getting the business here though, I'm not going to lie to you though. <laughs> I never even mentioned he has claws that's pretty dangerous too, piercing damage. Or he can just do this to the side of elevators. Like I mentioned earlier, he has went through his amplification where he looked more reptilian. I guess that's what happens when you get mutated against your will. Being into this beastly type thing, you still can see him talking. And he still has some form of intelligence, you know. The proof of it is right here. Whatever he can do before, he's better in every way. He's faster, claws are longer, teeth are sharper. He was bulletproof before. What makes you think bullets are working with him now? Of course they don't work on him now. People that would know his power level would be Batman and Robins because they fight him all the time. Even they notice that he's faster. So it's not just an assumption. They have plenty of battle experience with him. And even they can tell the difference between his power levels. He rips off his own hands in order to escape just for them to grow back on their own in like eight days. Super speed healing. Yeah. Of course, he's strong enough to run through concrete and planks. As durable as he is, he can put out as much as he can withstand because he can pierce himself, slice through his own skull, and he's strong enough to rip open bolts. Absurd strength. He's gotten his little fair share of battles with Grundy. Grundy's literal power is inconsistency, so for him to be able to damage him sometimes, it actually makes sense to Grundy's lore. That does not mean Killer Croc is Superman level, though. <laughs> I mean, just because Grundy has his moments. But yeah, this is still cool fighting Grundy, somebody that Batman be fighting too. You get it. Batman-esque type of characters. It's You get the routine. Pulls up to the Batmobile and makes it crash. You know Batman doesn't have no ordinary costume, which in some parts is bulletproof as well. So for him to be able to bite through it, let you know his biting power compared to Batman and stuff. Dude, he just put like a whole half human in his mouth. Look at this occasion, for example. 
check this out, got slammed that hard, right? Someone that's also a super soldier-esque type character, Catwoman, who's done crazy stuff, kind of overpowers her. More concrete piercing stuff to climb. He can rip open safe doors, shotgun shots, even old prisons that used to work on him. He's in a new level of strength to where it doesn't even work no more. It just busts out. Simply throws the swats and Batman off of him and gets up out of there. He lifts cars over his head and throws it through buildings. <laughs> yeah, so, so far I've showed you a lot of stuff to prove why he's strong and why he's evolved and gotten stronger. Thanks to the hush virus and stuff and mutation, even more. Making him have a metamorphosis. Affects the brain. Body kept changing. Thanks a lot for helping him evolve Hush to a more crazier being. But he eventually got his mind back to some degree, but his look is just going to stay like this now. Apparently a permanent power up. So since it's technically him now, like this, how strong is this version of him? I would say he definitely can lift over 10 tons, punch with similar force or more. I've already showed you what he can do to cars, do this type of stuff to alligators, even when he's not even in his mutated state, still this strong, do this to wooden crates before he was mutated. Yeah, doing this to cars and throwing them far in the air like that to show that it's nowhere near his max lifting a car and that's effortless. One of his most insane feats of all time is doing this to the bank vault like I showed earlier with strength. If you simply go on Wikipedia, bank vaults can weigh 20 plus tons. But then there's some that even weigh 100 to 90 tons to even 100 tons. So they can go from 20 tons to 40 tons to 90 a hundred tons, guys. Most bank vaults you see in these comic panels don't look like this. These can weigh like a lot less, like 4,000 pounds to 3,000 pounds and stuff like that. The one Croc did was clearly a lot worse. And they look more like the ones like in this picture right here and he did it, which weighs 20 tons at least. It's pretty much proven he can lift 20 plus tons. And I don't want to get too technical, but there's even feats that have been calculated way higher, like be able to rip off somebody's head with a piece of their spine connected to it. Oh boy, here we go with the predator calculations. Vsauce, a YouTuber that's probably a lot smarter than you're thinking, calculated that it would take a lot more force than just simply ripping somebody's head off. When you rip their head off with their spine connected to it, that makes the feet a lot more impressive. And it's even calculated to take a million newtons. Of course, this happened off screen, but if we're assuming that Killer Croc actually did rip off folks' head with their spine connected to it, that would take one million newtons of force, which is equivalent to 100 plus ton. No wonder the Bat Family be getting overpowered physically by this guy. This guy's way stronger than Bat Family members. I guess they was better off when he was younger and not mutated as much, right? The guy's bulletproof. He can lift over hundreds of tons. Probably can strike with way more force than that. No wonder this dude be breaking out of prisons and crap and can super heal and heal his own hands in a week and stuff. But how strong is this New 52 era? In New 52, he has like a little small army of mutants that rules the sewers. <laughs> so we got like a little few differences here and there. But at least he got his own game. He can still do the classic crocodile wrestling stuff. Batman still believes he can lift school buses. He can crush human skulls with his bare hands. Buildings collapse on him and he's able to withstand that. He's strong enough to run through concrete walls, even in newer stuff. Notice how his mouth doesn't look like a straight up alligator because you know how they retcon stuff. So he's kind of like back to normal or looking like a base form, like the early part of this post-crisis before the hush mutation stuff. But he still smashes the foundation pillar though. And he can just toss you really far. Seems like his regeneration is ridiculously fast. Like his eyes are gone and he seems like he can get them back. Pretty much the same day, punching the walls around him actually fights Bane in this continuity. In this continuity, he actually seems to do pretty well and get the W. Just like before, you're wasting your time shooting bullets at him. He can break Katana's swords by biting it, batteries in his back, he doesn't seem to care. <laughs> Demons, he rips their heads off. The strength advantage between super soldiers like Katana is just not enough. He still kind of trolls her. What's up with him in mutations? Because even in New 52, he had different mutations and different modes where he was like this, he got after a ritual got done on him and crap. Also, he can get more power, but we get more narrative on his ancestors to find a way to mutate him again, to get more power, and to look straight up absurd again. Look how he looks with all these teeth and a whole bunch of eyes. This mutation looks crazier than the one I showed you in the last part. So all the superhuman durable stuff he could do before, like withstanding electrocution, he can do it even better now. Like he can still do the standard flipping over armored car, humongous explosions, and then it gets worse. Like he mutates even again, like uh, into a Hydra. It's hard to believe this cat started off like this, mutated into this, thanks to some ritual stuff, and then got a literal Hydra form too. In this form, he could effortlessly tear apart buildings. Like, he's like a serious threat. And look how large he is. He's de this is definitely the strongest form we've seen of Killer Croc. I mean, just look at the size of this being like this. Batman, you better get Hellbat or something. 
It's so bad that he's even a threat for Wonder Woman level beings now. He's so powerful at this point where even Wonder Woman says, I only know two, perhaps three people on the planet who could face it. Yeah, he's a straight up threat for Wonder Woman. But this was a temporary power up. Of course, he can't stay like this, right? Because he can't be a planet buster every issue. But even back to normal, not mutated anymore, he can still withstand bullets though. So he ain't that weak, but he just ain't up there, up there like Wonder Woman tier right now though. But like his power level did go back down to where a shotgun did hurt him to a degree. But he can heal though. And he's still strong enough to throw cars with one arm. So then there's that. So yeah, this is gone. And Rebirth, he's still strong enough to take on giant eagles this freaking big. So it doesn't seem like his strength is much different from his post-crisis or New 52 when it comes to his base mutated state. I mean, look at the mutant animals he has to constantly fight against. It would be kind of weird if he wasn't somewhere on par with them. Even despite them being way larger, he's still a threat to them. Large doors like this... He can open up. He even got infected with something that technically should have killed him. He mutated, got big as crap, got kaiju sized like this to where he's even bigger than helicopters. He's like the size of small buildings right here. But yeah, looking like King Kong for real. Power. Beats up the largest of all these mutant animals. This dude Killer Croc got punched by General Zod and was able to get back up miraculously. Zod probably wasn't punching with planet busting for it. So yeah, I don't think he's much weaker than his post-crisis self, really. In this particular case, you even see him scuffle with Aquaman. Like, bruh, that's insane. And respectable. And puts him on the ground for two seconds. But where Killer Croc shines at is underwater, but Aquaman is also a beast underwater. Yeah, but he cannot bite Aquaman's durability. Yeah, I wouldn't quite say he's on Aquaman level, even underwater, but yeah. If it was a super soldier versus him underwater, the super soldier would have died. Y'all remember when Eclipso was taking over people? Killer Croc fought him here before Eclipso ended up taking him over too. He gets shot in the head by Deadshot's special bullets. You know Deadshot don't have normal stuff. And it's not an instant kill for him. And he can totally still talk and heal from it afterward. Say it with me again. In Rebirth, he has had temporary power-ups. Yay. He became strong enough to where he was like a giant monster that was strong enough to fight the entire league itself, including Wonder Woman, Superman, Aquaman, Flash. He's adapted to him and everything. They still managed to bring him down eventually like this. But of course, this was definitely temporary. But no matter if he's got temporary power-ups, he usually gets back to normal eventually. And when he's like normal size, he's still a superhuman being that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Batman even get the advantage over Batman because of his superior strength. It's just a common, he's going to always be a match for Batman type theme. When it comes to everything put together, he's already stronger than Batman, but Batman has gadgets and stuff, intelligence, battle IQ to help him bridge the gap, you know, but for the most part, that's just about going to do it. Did you know Killer Croc was this crazy? Did you know at the bare minimum, he can lift 20 tons and maybe even up to 100 tons and pro could strike with more force? Which temporary power do you think is the most absurd that I've shown in this video? But Regardless of it, you got to respect them. Majority of the time, he's around above the Batman range when it comes to strength, 100 ton, 20 ton level, when it comes to physicals, to be able to lift the heavy stuff, you know, stuff like that. But I also got to give a shout out to y'all because thanks for the donations. Respect Killer Croc. I'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel. Make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other How Strong videos. If you like what this channel is offering, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys later.